fantasy Caught in a landslide No escape from reality Hey guys, Underground Geek here. Oh man, this is a mess. This is um, Mother Panic Batman Milk Wars Part 2. I don't know who came up with this, but it's a dumpster fire. So let's get into this. Um, the cover is weird and boring. The art on it's okay, but um, the lines are all over the place like it's intentionally that way. So I'm going to assume it is. Um, it was written by Jody Hauser, which pretty much tells you everything that you need to know about it. Um, it was, um, let's go back to the beginning here on this book. And uh, just for you people that said that uh, comic books are should be just for kids, the rating on this is for teen plus. I don't know if you know what teen plus means, but that means anybody older than a teen. So teens and up read this. Just so I can fix the confusion that you may be suffering from your brain injury. Um, so yeah, Jody Hauser did this. And uh, then Magdalene Visaggio did a weird three-page story on the back of it that makes zero sense and should never have been in the book. Um, so we start out here, and it's become very, you know, I tried to read Mother Panic when it first got started. The art was so bad that I couldn't get into it, and the story was just confusing. Basically, this book plays it out like she is Black Widow. She's Black Widow mixed with Batman, is the equivalent of what she is, and she lives with a crazy mom. I don't, that's the, the gist of it. So we get the story here, and it's telling her life story all over again to where she went to the Gather House, which is apparently is like this um, school for brainwashing and uh, like weaponizing children. And then as they get older, they become the Black Widow. And um, so then after they tell her story, it gets back to present day. And this art is just like not par for a DC book. This looks like something that somebody with, you know, a day's work could do. You know, if they just you went in there and drew it up and colored it. I mean, this art is rough. And I mean, the close-ups are good on their faces, but it's very generic, like hardly any shading, very basic colors. And uh, it's just Weird. I mean, I don't understand why they thought this was this was good. But we start out here and we get this weird thing where the grandma gives her some tea and the tea starts yelling help at her and it triggers a, a PTSD that she had. She throws the mug down because that's what everybody does when you know, when they start seeing like faces in their coffee or in their tea. So then the the crazy mom tells her that everything's gonna be okay and then we just start the story. I don't I don't really know. I, I know, I know. But it's Milk Wars Part 2. This is written by Jody Hauser, drawn by Ty Templeton, colored by Kieran Smith in like under eight hours. Letters by John Workman, covered by Frank Whiteley. So that's why the cover wasn't so awful, because it was by Frank Whiteley. Um, and this is DC's Young Animal crossover that was shepherded by Jared Way and Steve Orlando. So that's why the stories aren't complete trash on uh, DC's uh, Young Animals because Steve Orlando had something to do with it. But Mother Panic was created by Jody Hauser, Tommy Lee Edwards, and Gerard Way. And um, I have to think they probably thought this up in like one afternoon. Because that's about all you need to know about her is uh, she was she's pretty much Black Widow, and her costume is like this weird Darth Vader uh, Batman, except it's all white and her gloves are oversized with spikes on the knuckles for some reason. I don't know. Nothing matters. So she's she gets in her suit. She gets on her crazy weird flying machine that has like zero aerodynamics on it and uh, she starts making her way to the gather house because she needs to make sure it's still you know it's not there anymore for some reason and she gets there and it's like rebuilt 
everything's good again like there's they've even had time to trim the hedges in the shape of animals you know and they're all like very childish animals um but the first thing i was thinking when i saw is it looked like wayne manor but she pulls up and she says wow this is just really doesn't make any sense you know and uh she says this was ruins last week how did they build this so fast so she makes her way to the front door you know like anybody that's a superhero would never do and uh, there's a note on the door that says a land flowing with milk and honey and I don't know why that note stuck on the door that that makes no sense why did they do it so she gets inside and it's almost like they're throwing a celebration they've got everything decorated for like a party and she's like what the heck is this but she did what the heck and then they did the uh, they typed it out you know and then did again did again and then she said the word won't come i can't say it it's like it's like a sensor in my mind and um so then she is attacked by like a hundred fake robins they just grab her coat uh, her cape yank her down and then um they all have guns around her so she's been captured by children that's how good of a superhero she is and she says they said you're now a prisoner of the holy sidekick choir of merciful justice and i was like what so this is the thing that don't really make a whole lot of sense they're all dressed like robins they all have r's on them and they all basically have the same costume on but you'll find out later on that they all get different names so why did they draw them all with robin r's on there i don't get it but then she says you know y'all plan on shooting me and they laugh and then they take her to like pretty much church and uh when she gets there someone's preaching and they said and i looked and behold ye has been chosen by the lord your god and he made and he had made you a molten calf and that's you know a direct uh direct opposite of what the word says is do not make any idols of me you know of golden calves or anything like that so obviously you know they're trying to show how uh misguided that this is and he's got it set up there's an altar there's a cross but instead of jesus it's a bat that's crucified and then it's got mother nun over there looking very creepy and he says violet we are blessed to have you join our service today and it's freaking batman looking like a lutheran priest and uh she says batman he says oh i'm father bruce the shepherd of this flock and they're all like amen so now he's basically telling her what's going on she's trying to make sense of it because it's like the most peculiar thing ever why is batman doing this and for some reason batman's uh cow looks like the 1966 batman for some reason too so i don't really understand why they did that and then um as they're doing this the crazy nun lady is like pouring some kind of milk out of her hands into cups and she says what kind of drugs did i take last night and they're like drugs are bad and so then um they're all drinking the milk and it's you know obviously some kind of drug and she she can't make sense of it she's like what's what's going on and why are you dressed like a bat you know if you're not batman he said bats are mammals mammals produce milk uh but few mammals also have wings to bring you closer to heaven so it's obvious at this point he's a psychopath so he says come let me show you the grand machine and then the doors just swing open you know all theatrically so then they go back there and like i said before the art is not very good but it at times looks good close up if that makes sense but uh so he's basically showing her this laboratory where they brainwash the kids and then they come out and they've got their costumes and their new identities and they're just ready to go like child soldiers and uh one pops out and says lesser antilla and iguana reporting for duty so obviously they're running out of names and uh then it shows conveyor uh or you know the the line there is they're all giving them the guns and weapons and stuff and she says you're brainwashing kids you're building an army it's the same old story as last time and he says oh no violet some verses may seem familiarly true but i assure you this is a hymn that has never been uh sang before and so then it talks about his past you know how his parents were killed and then how he was randomly attacked by a priest with a cup of milk and he decided to drink it and then at that point he says father i shall become a priest 
So that made zero sense. This is like a crack addict story. So he drinks the milk and that's how he got brainwashed. And uh, she said, that makes zero sense. I was thinking the same thing. And uh, he said, it doesn't have to make sense, my child. It just has to make me happy. And uh, she said, your parents being murdered made you happy? And he's like, no, no, they, they didn't. And, you know, he said, it all worked out in the end. And so that at that point, um, the priest tries to grab her hand, or the uh, nun tries to grab her hand, and she starts seeing her past again and what all was going on. And uh, so at that point, the, the nun is starting to get to her. And she says, and I will pay homage and honor to thee, the golden calf who helps us all see. He said, you see, your origin can be uh, whatever you make of it, whatever you let us make of it. And she says, I don't, I don't, you know, I, I don't want, to, I don't know about this. And then that's when she sees one of the kids that she actually knows get put into the machine and uh, pops out as a Phoenix, fo a Phoenix Fox. And uh, she's like, no, 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 you know, I, I've got to stop this. So that's when the first, the first real conflict happens. And, uh. Then he says, uh, she says, but I survived my past. No one takes that away from me. He says, uh, and then she says, and I'm a, a heck of a lot stronger than the scar tissue they left in me. And he says, it's, it thinks it has the teeth of a lion. And she says, you're dang right. So then she one punches him, two punches him. Um, they keep fighting. He kind of kicks her down. Not a whole lot happens. She takes a gun from him. And then, uh, instead of shooting Batman, she shoots the nun, which was obviously not human. And it, she shatters into a million pieces, like she was made of glass or something, like she was a glass of milk, literally. So, when she shoots that, that nun, the effects wear off, and all the milk starts oozing out of Batman. And he slowly turns from uh, Preacher Batman to the regular Batman, and now has his rebirth suit on, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And then here's where it gets weird. She starts cussing again, but they start putting a, red, a black bar through it instead of the little uh, punctuations before. So they can't even be consistent. And then Batman, you know, immediately tries to act like nothing's wrong. He's like, I need to save the kids. I go get the kids. I'm going to take them out of here. So as they're leaving, she's destroying the place because that's what she does. She's burning it down once again. And, uh, as they're taking all the kids away, the little Fennec Fox says that she wants to go with uh, Mother Panic. And uh, she says, you know, I can't, you know, I can't take very, uh, care of a kid. And she said, but I feel safest with you. So since she knows the kid and she has a background with her, she takes her to her house randomly, you know, and Batman just lets her. And, uh, you know, sets her in for the night, goes to see her mom. Batman shows up. The mom knows who Batman is because she's got some kind of crazy magic. Uh, then Cave Carson's cybernetic eye shows up and teleports them on another adventure because nothing makes sense. Um, I got to say this book really was a waste of my time. Like the art is terrible. Um, the story is terrible. And then we cut to this other weird little special that Mags did that says by the early 1960s astounding uh, tales has been cancelled and the formerless girl with it but in 1981 the writer artist team of Fred Hand and Gary Straker uh, brought the book back to life as Alpha 13 Hand's version named Caroline Sharp Chrysalis for the first time the leader of a team of superpower misfits working for a secret government organization to stop I mean it just oh my god keeps going and going so they're in Antarctica Guy gets punched in the chest and dies. Here's the thing. Mags writes a book, and the first thing in it is a girl punching a dude for no reason. Why? Every time she does a book, it's some random girl punching a guy for no reason. Overly violent women every time. And it's just it's hilarious. I don't I don't get it. What is what is this person's obsession with punching people? And uh but back to the main story, I mean, guys, it's just bad. I mean, really bad. Do not waste your money on this book if you've been thinking about it. I mean, the art is terrible, and the art gets worse as the book goes on, not better. And so you can tell 
that they were in a hurry for this because like I said there's hardly any shading you could tell if someone actually knew what they were doing that the coloring could have actually helped the book some but this is very substandard it, it's not up to you know this is like an independent book I just got done reading Witchblade by image it has better art than this book this is DC this is a book with Batman in it and this is just not up to the standard of DC and the story is not either and then Mags Visaggio's weird little story there at the end just puts the icing on the cake because I understand the background of the stories and the characters and everything but there's no reason for that to even be in there it's just like hey we did this book and we got Mags over here and she's in that stupid mentor, mentor program we gotta do something here you go I mean that's it's that's just pretty much it but hit the like button hit the subscribe button don't waste your time on this book it's trash I hope you liked the video and have a great day guys I got some more videos coming out and uh, if you like to support me on my maker support and also I have a teespring account so if you want to check some out check out some of the merchandise on there just let me know talk to you guys later underground geek out